Hi, I'm Justin Webster, developer of Conformalizer. I'd like to give you now a demonstration on using Conformalizer version 4. So first of all, let's just take a look at the interface and the basic workflow. Conformalizer compares EDL or XML files from two versions of a picture cut. It makes a list which represents the changes between the two versions, and it can then automatically reconform your audio data to suit the new cut. So there's a panel for the old cut, there's a panel for the new cut, and then a panel for the change list, the map of the changes between these two versions. You'll also notice there are views over here to load the two relevant QuickTime movies, and another view at the bottom here, the block view, which will help us visualize and manipulate the changes in the cut. OK, so let's take a look at a conform. So first of all, we're going to assume that you've got an EDL or an XML file for every version of the picture you've received. And this is a list which describes every shot in the reel, and it's the foundation of this powerful workflow. If you really can't get EDLs, there's another workflow which uses the movie views here to manually create a change list. Uh, let's continue with the EDLs. So we're going to conform from version 12 of this film up to version 14. So we load the old list using import old list. Choose version 12. Then we load the new list. Option level 2, which is version 14. Then we hit compare. So now we're looking at the change list, which is really just showing you all the bits of footage which have not changed. Conformalizer has compared the old and the new lists and matched up the shots by name and timecode to figure out where they've moved to in this new version. So these timecodes simply tell you the in and out point of some footage in the old cut and its location in the new cut. You could use this list right away to conform your Pro Tools session, but we're going to take a closer look at it to show you where the real power lies in Conformalizer. The block view shows the two timelines, with the top line being the old cut and the bottom line being the new. The blocks represent chunks of footage which were found to exist in both versions, and the gaps are the shots which were found in one cut but not the other. So the first thing we do after comparing the EDLs is to load in the relevant picture files. So using Command 1, import old movie, I load in the version 12 picture, and using Command 2, import new movie, I'll load in the new picture. And now you'll see that any time we select an event in the list, the relevant movies locate to the correct frame, and the relevant blocks highlight in the block view. Having the movies follow along like this opens up a number of really powerful features, not the least of which is being able to immediately verify that the change list is accurate. If the movies lock up to the same frame, then we know with 100% certainty that the timecodes are good, and then we can trust the changes are correct. So occasionally we may have shots which conformalizers fail to find in either the old or the new lists. And these orphan shots are represented here in the block view as small gaps. In the old cut, a gap probably represents some footage which has been dropped from the film. In the new list, a gap usually shows brand new footage which has been inserted. It's also possible that Conformalizer failed to match a shot for some other reason, perhaps a changed clip name or an updated visual effect shot. In those cases, we can use the movie views here to help us quickly locate, match and fix those shots. So here's one little gap that I'm going to investigate. So I'll select this event by clicking on its block, and you'll see the pictures will locate to the start of that chunk of footage, and the border around the movies will become coloured blue, indicating that we're looking at matched footage. So I'm going to use these navigation buttons here to scroll the movies backward into this gap that we're interested in. You can see right away that the borders have turned red, meaning that we're looking at orphaned footage, frames which could not be found when we compared the old and the new cuts. You can probably see that these frames are actually the same, and we can verify that with this little help of you here called the difference view. If both frames are identical, you see nothing. If there's any difference at all between the two frames, you'll see it highlighted. So I'm going to nudge the old movie back a couple of frames, and you'll see the foreground action highlighting in the difference view right away. The two movies still kind of look like they're in sync, but the difference view is proving that they're really not. So let's put them back in sync the way we had them before, and we'll continue scrolling both movies backwards together. I'm going to keep going as long as they're still identical, because I want to manually match these two shots before running this conform. Oh, and here's the point where they fall out of sync with each other. So this would be a better place for our event to start, now that we've proven it's actually a valid match. So we'll capture the current time code position from these two movies, and set that as the start of our event in the list. So we'll use the menu item Set In Times, Shift Apple I, which captures time code from the current position of that film. And there, straight away you'll see the block got bigger, the time codes have been reset, and if we nudge forward, we see that our movies now show the blue highlight and the equal sign, meaning that these are no longer orphan frames. So let's have a look at the rest of the conform and see what else we can say about it. 
We can see here that there are a couple of sequences which have swapped position within the cut. Small connecting rods cross over, and we can also see that the highlights switch order as we select them. If we hold down the control key, we can scrub either of these movies right here in the block view. By scrubbing this gap in the old picture, we see a sequence which has presumably been deleted from the cut. If I scrub here, we see a sequence which has been inserted into the cut. Now, I feel like we may have seen the sequence before, but for now let's just treat it as entirely new footage. So now that we've checked the conform and tweaked what we need to, we can save it out for later or for sharing with the rest of the crew. It'll also save references to the two QuickTime movies we had loaded up, so the next person to open that conform file will be able to see them right away. We can also do an email summary of the changes using the relevant menu item. As well as the actual conform file, the email contains a range of useful information on the conform and leaves room for you to write descriptions of the insertions, deletions and swaps. So now you have a change list and you want to reconform your session. So conformalizer recuts a Pro Tools session in real time using copy and paste commands. The most important thing to remember is that it doesn't use shuffle mode to insert or delete time. We simply take our existing work and we move it down an hour, leaving an hour of empty space at the head of the session. And the conformalizer will then assemble a new cut on this empty stretch of timeline, leaving a history of our older versions further down the session. So we reset the session start time, in this case from hour one to hour zero. We're saying copy bits from hour one and assemble them back here at hour zero. Switch to conformalize and tell it to do the same thing using these small hour code nudge buttons. So we're going to nudge the new hour back to zero. So again, we're saying our old material lives in hour code one, we want the new stuff to be assembled at hour zero. If you're short on real estate on your timeline, you can also nudge in half hour increments by holding the shift modifier. So now we park our Pro Tools selection in whichever tracks we want to conform, including the markers track, and we'll hit the conform button. And off it goes. So this is a very small session and we've got conformalizer running relatively quickly. Uh, with a much larger session with a lot of VCAs, a lot of regions, a lot of mix automation, you may want to slow down the conform using the preference in the setup panel. It's also possible to conform one event at a time, in which case you'll see the small progress indicator here, pause and wait for you to hit the next button. And once the main conform is done, depending on your preference, you can have conformalizer add a set of markers showing the cut locations or even spin through the session and cleaning up any automation snaps at places where footage has been inserted. For now, we'll just let it finish and have a look at the result. And so there, it's done. Okay, let's just reveal the new guide track so we can have a look at the difference between the conformed and the new. And of course, they're 100% phase locked, perfect sync. And we can quickly spin through the edits as well, just making sure that the conform is 100% accurate, which of course it should be, given that we've already loaded the pictures into Conformalizer and verified every change. So now all we need to do is reset our session start time, and that's it, our session's conformed up to version 14. Okay, so there are two important things we haven't done yet. We haven't looked at visual effects updates, and we never addressed that section of inserted footage which we thought looked so familiar. So let's check out the visual effects first. In the setup panel, you'll see a set of preferences which help conformalizer find the visual effects shots, and then flag them when they change. So you specify the naming convention used by your visual effects house, and conformalizer will match those shots just as if they were identical, but will flag them with a red color in the change list to alert you. So here you see a single shot which has been flagged as a visual effects change. And you can see right away the difference here in the, in the movie and the difference views. Most of the time we're not looking at individual shots, we're looking at long stretches of unchanged material, all held together into one big block. So if one of these healed events contains a visual effects shot, then the whole event will be coloured red, just to indicate that somewhere lurking within is a visual effects update. So then we have some extra features here as well to help you locate these shots. So compare with that healing does exactly what it says. It leaves you with a shot by shot list of everything conformalizer could match between the old and the new. To leave just the visual effects shots, we can select normal events and delete them. Now you see just a list of the visual effects and you can eyeball the differences immediately. Better yet, you can describe the changes right here in conformalizer and then email the entire list to the rest of the crew. So nobody will ever need to go scanning through two movies looking for changes and simply double click on the conform file and see the changes for themselves. 
So the other thing we need to do is look at the section of inserted footage, which I'm pretty sure I've seen in a much earlier version of the reel. Any shots which could not be found during the compare process, the so-called orphan shots, can be found in the original lists, coloured red. I think this might be our sequence here, and sure enough it is. We simply select the offending shots and find selected events in other files. You point at your master EDL folder and let Conformalizer scan every single cut you've ever been given. Once it's done, the results will appear in this small helper window showing how many shots were matched and for which duration. When you've decided on the best option, version 11 in our case, we select it and load as old list. Then we compare selected shots only. Yeah, so now we've got a conform which takes the piece we need from version 11 and inserts it directly into version 14. And the chances are you may still have version 11 a couple of hours further down your timeline, so all you need to do is go to conformalizer, nudge the time codes up, and conform the sequence into place. Reconforming databases in Conformalizer is a piece of cake. As long as your data is in some kind of text-based feet and frames or timecode format, Conformalizer can fix it. For something like a FileMaker database, we simply export the version 12 records as tab-separated text, including the record ID, the timecodes, and maybe some other text fields in case we need to track down any issues later. We then go to the Conformalizer setup page and we switch the conform type to File Tab Separated, and then hit Conform. It asks you to locate the tab separated file for conforming and then conforms it. So you'll see Conformalizer has created you a new file with the timecodes all conformed up to version 14. If we take a look at the file, you'll see what else it does. These timecodes here in brackets are times which cannot be conformed, most likely because these bits of footage have been dropped from the cut. You'll see here at the end of each line there's a new field added which says either conformed, respot, or no code. This is just a helper for you if you're pulling this data back into a FileMaker database. You can map this into some kind of status field in your database and later search for the respot records. So I'll import this conformed data back into FileMaker, matching by record ID and updating the timecode and status fields. There, done. 10 records updated, and we can see right away the records which have been conformed and the ones which need to be respotted. So we can very quickly do a search for respot if that's what we need to do. We can also quickly go through and reset the version now that these are all version 14. And we're done. The rebalancing is really very simple with Conformalizer, and you can do some amazingly complicated real swapping conforms just as easily as you do a, a one-shot edit. So I'm going to drop in the EDLs for the old cut of the film, the complete set. I'm going to drop in the EDL for the real 7 of the new cut, and then we compare, if OK. So here we have the recut, and you can see straight away that there's a change to real 7, several edits, insertions and deletions, and most notably up here we have one chunk which has come all the way from real 8, 5 minutes and 30 seconds, and been inserted somewhere towards the end of our new real 7. So how do we conform our session when we have a change like this? The simplest approach is to move your old cut later in the session and let Conformalizer build your new Reel 7 in the correct place. So we do this by cutting and pasting down at 10 and 11 hours in our case. And then we do the same in Conformalizer by nudging our code up to 10 and 11, and then we hit Conform. So if you run super sessions with all Reels in one, then this is obviously a no-brainer. A complex rebalance is no more difficult than a single two-frame trim. And rebalancing like this on a database is no more complicated than rebalancing within one reel. The process is identical. And it's done. So let's just quickly check the conform. And sure enough, here is our section which has been rebalanced in from reel 8. So I hope that was helpful and informative. Uh, but if you do have any remaining questions or suggestions, please get in touch on support at thecargocop.nz. Thanks for watching.